Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to another reading of The Legend of Zelda, Hyrule His Hyrule Historia. Oh my god, I cannot believe my mic crapped out in the last video. Alright, let's do this post-commentary, how's that sound? Kakariko Villagers. Oh, this is going to be such hell. There's so much I said I do not remember at all. I... I don't know what to say. Mm. I think I was explaining here about how I'm not going to read... Um, I decided not to read the comic book. I'm sorry. The manga, whatever you want to call it. I'm sorry. I, I just uh, don't feel it's necessary. I, I feel like it would have be been better if I had more voice actors. Maybe I would do it. But I, I don't think it's a good idea. So, uh, and Speaking of voice actors, is there are make working on a new... Um, Link to the past one that's been in the news. I guess I can talk about that. But yeah, um, here's the Kakariko villager. I was, oh yeah, I was also talking about the. Uh, hang on, parent and child. Renato and his daughter Luda. Their appearances reminiscent of Native Americans are well suited to the village of Kakariku, which wouldn't look out of place. Blah 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 in a western. Uh, Barnes. There are many design sketches of Barnes, but who runs the bomb shop? All of them depict a tired old man. And yeah, Barnes is cool. But yeah, I was talking a bit about how it, um, Twilight Princess had a lot of vibes going on. It had an Eastern vibe, it had some African vibes going on, it had a Western vibe and all. And here's Telma. I was also explaining how Telma kind of reminds me of, um, kind of reminds me of, uh, well, Telma is a proprietress of the bar. Despite her hearty manner, she also exhibits a certain feminine sweetness. She's linked to, she's kind of Link and treats him as an adult. She always reminded me of, um, what, the, what is the name? Oh my god. Um, Impa, duh. But, you know, I never got that vibe from Impa. Uh, Aru. Uh, R Russell and his friends were called the Resistance by the developers. Of them, Aru was the, uh, was the character with, with the most concept art. It looks like they designed him much uh, uh, slender, uh, whatever. Um, yeah. Sh uh, Shad, I'm so sorry. I'm trying so hard. Shad researches the sky people. He looks scholarly in many of his design sketches. I am so mad. You have no idea how mad I am. I, I, I bring this fo footage up. I'm like, wait, why is there no sound at the end? So I go all the way to that first sentence here. I'll show you the concept art of uh, design sketches. She's a Western style warrior with aspects of appearance, including her hairstyle. It's an e hit at Eastern influences. So yeah. Twilight Princess had a lot going on for it in region wise, because primarily Twilight Princess is based on a medieval uh, uh, European times and all. Impaz. And Impaz was something I was talking about. Um. Old Man Impa could be uh, considered a male version of Impaz. Uh, if he'd been used, he would have been the series' first male Impa. And yeah, that's what I was talking about before with the idea of a, a male Link. Um, I mean, a female Link. I'm for the idea, it's just I don't think Nintendo would do something like that because they'd want the consistency of Impa, Link, and Zelda, you know? Just so you have a familiar portal. Because, you know, thinking before the timeline... There was a time when The Legend of Zelda was just individual stories with the same lore, you know? That's pretty much the idea of it. So, when you started a new idea, and yeah, it'll hang on to older ideas. Like, there was a sequel to Ocarina of Time and a sequel to Wind Waker, but, and Wind Waker had references to Ocarina of Time, but ultimately, they're all its own string of stories using Link's character. But now we have it in a timeline. It could be changed. I don't know. It, 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 it's just... I, I don't know. It is just confusing, right? Ultimately, I, I, I th think it would be something very difficult to pull off. That's just my thoughts on that. I am plugging in my charger. There we go. Oh, man. I really wish I looked at this last night. <sighs> I thought I just fixed the problem with my commentary on my uh, game capture HD. I'm probably gonna have to do is constantly uninstall it and reinstall it. Seems like the only answer. I don't know. I'm just waiting for this frame to end, unless this is doing that f thing where it freezes. It's doing that thing where it freezes. 
All right, good news. It is not doing that thing where it freezes. I just wasted my time. I really got to look at the... I, I split the, the uh, thumbnails a little more. I mean, a little more... I, I, exp I mean, I expanded my uh, footage on my props a little more so I can see what we're up to. That's what the old iMovie used to do. And that was a big problem I had with Let's Playing Pokemon Red back in the day. It was the um, trouble I had with... Uh, yeah. There we go. Now we're moving. Oh my god, I'm so... I think every uh, part of, the, of this series, every year I did it, something went wrong. I, I, I think, I'm, I'm not sh entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that every time I did this series, something went wrong. But who knows. Alright, there we go. Falby and Fire. It's been a long time since I played uh, uh, Twilight Princess, so you gotta forgive me if I don't remember a lot of these people I, I, th I think I remember these guys being in one of those uh, games for heart pieces uh, I, I think they were by um, Zora River or whatever I don't remember uh, oh well I guess I didn't read that close up that jo Giovanni Giovanni's body was turned into gold after he made a deal with demons his in final design he's depicted as a round and fat but design sketches him as a slant include a slender man and yeah, I was saying how I didn't like the couple of those. Perlo. Perlo runs a star game in Hyrule Castle Town. He was actually designed to be more a more realistic version of Tingle. Which, no, I don't agree with that. Uku. Uku's appearance is incredibly unique. Her design resembles the work of, an, of artist Amadeo Modigliani. And I was also mentioning that like Mips from Super Mario 64, the, the, the names of the rabbits from Mario 3D games, they're pretty much named after the their uh, code that... Uh, they, they, well, Mips was named after a chip, and uh, Uku is named after a code and whatnot. And there's a design for the Great Fairy of this game. I don't remember if it was in this game or not, uh, but they, I just forget. The Goron Tribe. Gorons that first appear in this game as an enemy. Because of this, the gentleness that they had in Ocarina of Time has disappeared, replaced by a severe expression. And, my god, I hate this design for a Goron. So this is why I don't want too re much realism in Zelda. Oh god, especially with those Goron nipples. Goron Elder, A's design was used for Gora Ebizo, one of the four Goron Elders. And that was a fun uh, dungeon in the game, I have to say. Dangoro and the Goron, tri uh, Goron Elder designs there. And here's um, Darbus, this guy rocks. For some reason, this concept art depicts Telma's cat riding on Darbus' shoulder. It seems that initially the feline played a role in this story. And yeah, I, I don't know why, but um, I went back for a second to explain this, but something about Darbus just reminds me of uh, Groos. I don't know if that was intentional, but you know, the Zora tribe. Yeah. Battle masks. Mask worn by the Zora tribe during combat. Only the, the battle mask at the upper left appears in the, in the game. I'm surprised they, w went, uh, they went as far as designing a mask f for use during rain prayers. Yeah, like, you know, just more details to add to the game. Zora Tribe Sketches. It looks as though more realistic Zora designs were among the possibilities. Their inclusion in the game would have marked a drastic departure from their look uh, from previous games. And yeah, I was saying how, like, a, lot, a couple of them look like kind of like uh, River Zoras, which I think is pretty interesting. And Rutella. Rutella is a Zora Queen, which is uncommon for the tribe. From the, from the design sketches, we can surmise that a Zora King was also slated... Uh, yeah... Uh, to appear. Rutella's son, Rollis, seeing the multiple design sketches, one might imagine a, that a considerable amount of thought went into the look of his necklace. So yes, yes, more details. It's all about details, and those finer details are what people like. The illustration to the right is a design for what King Bulblin would be wearing during the second battle. The original plan was to have a piece of his armor fall off every time Link stuck, struck him with his sword. In the end, however, the king used two shields to defend himself. That was another fun fight, um, Twilight Princess. And, uh, I just gotta go down a little bit. Go ahead. Move. And there you go. There we go. Monsters. When it comes to, the, to their designs, the Deku Toad and the Topali have a few things in common. This is because the Deku Toad was meant to depict a to what a Topali might look like a thousand years in the future. So yeah, like metamorphosis and whatnot. And there's uh, 
Ook, I hated that boss fight because it was so annoying. So Polly's, there's a Skull Kid using the new design they had to avoid uh, racism allegations. And yeah, um... Twilight Emissaries. Citizens of the Twilight Realm transformed into demons by Xant. As with Midna, they were designed from the mask down. So it's all about masks, which is, um, you know, a lot of people do have theories connecting Majora's Mask to this game, and I can totally see it, definitely. You know, like even if they aren't in the same, whether they're in the same Twilight uh, timeline or not, you know, you can still make uh, cross comparisons. You know, it's interesting how it works that way. Impo, upon defeat, Impos leave behind pole souls. Because you're so busy trying to catch the pose in the game, it's not often you get a chance to get a closer look. To take a closer look, whatever. Let's take that closer look. Go ahead, because I know I'm scrolling over to that picture. There he is. Yes, yeah, so that's what the Impo looks like. It's true though. So quick to try to get it. An an Aralafo an Aralafos. I never learned how to pronounce that one. Pains of butts though. Pains in the butts. Yeah, that, I'm just trying to get all the descriptions in there as possible. I definitely recommend watching this in full screen. This series, Zelda's bow, the weapon used by Zelda during the final battle with Ganondorf. Her arrows were created from transformed light spirits, so now you know where that comes from. And yeah, there's a little th look into the uh, the weapons with the more famous slash uh, less familiar weapons, how getting its own description, like the Dominion Rod I'm going to read soon. Dominion Rod, also known as the Rod of the Heavens, it, you, it causes stat uh, statues to copy Link's movements, making the rod an uh, unusual item. And I think that's in Howard Warriors, not sure. I did talk a little bit about Hyrule Warriors, uh, uh, but not, not, it's not important. Concept art. The village was designed as a place attuned to nature, where the villagers lived happy, strongly rooted to the earth. And they talk about Ordon Village. And I was mentioning, um, this, that's a beautiful illustration. Like I, I love the illustrations we have here. Uh, Unintended Shop I was mentioning a little bit because I hated that thing. Because it just reminds me of that first dungeon. It was a real pain. And in fact, the whole first part of Twilight Princess is a pain. I, I, I mean, it's like, and it's like everyone always says uh, it's like Iron Sword's really bad. I didn't think so. I was, I was actually thought it was pretty cool because it's interactive. I got to learn about a new world, but it was just so dull. Twilight, uh, Twilight Princess. I'm sorry. You don't have to agree with me, but originally Link would howl in the, his beast form to startle the statues into moving. In the final version of the game, however, players must solve a puzzle, the one that I always look online to do because it's annoying. So yeah. Portal, an initial concept sketch, the design for the rest of the Twilight Realm was based on its geometric patterns. Boy, do I hope I don't have to deal with this microphone problem. I guess because I was recording for a while. Secret entrance, a cat sits by a wall. Perhaps this is an illustration of Telma's cat, Louise, showing like the secret passage to the entrance. So yeah, that, that's pretty much, I think that's them just teasing out what the cat was supposed to do if it was more part of the story. But in the end of the day, you didn't need it. And I like that level of Link investigating, you know, and, and having all those friends to help him do it. I thought it was cool. The Twilight, an illustration depicting the daily life of a citizen of the Twilight Realm. This one is stealthily stealing food from an abandoned village. So yeah, you know, it's not always good for them. And now we're in Phantom Hourglass. We got done with um, Twilight Princess. And that is a larger game right before, and there's the one before Skyward Sword, which is the last game we see. So it was. it's bound to be the longest one, so... These should be a lot shorter. Linebeck. Linebeck was with his dashing smile. Linebeck the third, a descendant of Linebeck, who appears in Spirit Tracks, has an identical face but slightly different clothing. Ocean King. An illustration of the Ocean King, the true form of Oceus. He appears in his whale form at the end of the game. And I thought that kind of it kind of reminds me of uh, the wind fish from uh, Link's Awakening too. Moto and the Cobble Knots Knights. To the left is the picture of King Moto, who dwells on the Isle of Ruins. To the right is the spirit of, Co of a Cobble Knight commander, who works in King's service. There are three commanders all in all, each clad in different color. First wears red, second wears green, and third wears yellow. Astrid and Kayo. Uh, Astrid, the fortune teller, and her servant Kayo. Kayo's initial design was more or less identical to his appearance in the final game. But Astrid's appearance was a little later altered, including the color of her hair. Bellum. 
The evil deity Bellum is the final boss of Phantom Hourglass. During the early development, he was nicknamed Grande Octo, meaning Big Octorock. Yeah, and also going back to my comments about why I didn't mention Ganondorf with the three people have to say the same after I read Octomine. Octomine, these members of the Octorock family were designed to be Bellum's henchmen. I, I really meant that because, you know, different timelines are allowed to have different villains. Because the Demon King will always have a different face, you know. But Link and Zelda can't. You know, it's just part of the staple. And they're just showing off a bunch of bad guys. Not much to show. Concept art. Island designs. Design sketches for a variety of islands. The island to the right was originally going to be to have a new addition each time Link visited. Gradually growing larger and larger. But yeah, I'm guessing because it was a DS game, you couldn't really do that. Mini boat, a design sketch featuring a boat. It looks as though it is propelled by manpower. Behind Link, Tingle, and his sibling pedal furiously. Perhaps the man at the prow is an early version of Linebeck. Perhaps. And now we're in spirit tracks. Link. Design sketches of the uniform Link wears during his time as an apprentice train engineer. This was the first Zelda game to depict Link wearing a uniform. Perhaps a large number of design sketches is proof of the staff's efforts. The final design was chosen based on whether or not it made him look like an engineer. And I show them all. And just to say now, once again, if, you, if I go too, a little too fast, I, I, I encourage you guys to just uh, uh, pause it and take a look, you know. That's why I'm really glad I have this quality. And yeah, it, it, there's a lot of cool ideas, you know. They, they work with colors a lot, they, they, the, the hat and the... They change it with hats, they change scars, they get ideas, you know, a bunch of train ideas. Zelda. Zelda calls the Byron from within the possessed phantom. So the bottom right, Bottom is depicted kneeling before Zelda in the manner of a royal retainer. In the final game, you see them meet for the first time, but perhaps it was originally intended that they would be old friends. Which would have been cool, but, you know, what are you going to do? Alfonso in Super Smash... No, it's known as Super Smash Brothers uh, replacement for Toon Link. Alfonso is the descendant of Gonzo, who appears in The Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass. In these design sketches, however, the resemblance to his ancestor is not as clear. Chancellor Cole. Cole takes on the form of a Chancellor of Hyrule Castle. As far as I can tell from the design sketches, it appears that even in the early stages of development, he was intended to be a man of small stature who would undergo a complete transformation. It's going to be so hard to read the final letter by uh, Anuma. I think I do remember reading this a little quickly at the end because I was going over time, so that's going to be really troublesome. Byron, a warrior of the Lakomo tribe who schemes to revive the Demon King. Some of the design sketches depict Byron and Chancellor Cole together, perhaps suggesting that it was the decided early in development to make them accomplices. And I never played Sphere Track, so I don't know how that turns out. I, I have it. I'm just, I just want to beat uh, Fam Hourglass first. Maladus. Maladus, after losing his hold on the body he oc occupied, some of the uh, design sketches have two horns, which are uh, one of the characteristics of blah blah blah. Maladus Final Form. Maladus, as he appears after possessing Cole during the final battle, allowing him to obtain a body. In the final game, he is a four legged demonic beast, but it seems that there's designs for a humanoid form as well. And again, I can't give as much context as usual, because I'm not sure. Maladus in, each, uh, in his death rows, wailing in agony after losing a battle. He never appears like this in the game. You can't help but feel a little sorry for him. Illustrations depicting ideas of a fight with Maladus. Uh, this idea was used in the final battle. Yeah, and it's kind of gross looking, too. The Dream Train. Looking cool. Super cool. Sages. Anjin, who protects the Tower of Spirits and the Sages of the Lakomo tribe, who appear in shrines all over the world, and aid Link in his quest. In the final game, Anjin is an old woman, but there are also design sketches in which she is drawn as a man. So, you know, just working around ideas. And this is a situation where you can't have, uh, you know, you can't maybe think of gender swaps without taking much of a risk, you know. Because it's all about risk and reward, especially if you look at it in a business sense. It's tough, but, you know, there is a balance ga uh, developers have to make like that. Yeah, I do like the designs here. Like I like the art style of a uh, the uh, spirit tracks and all. 
This guy in sketch is a little Como tribe. It seems that their vehicles, which are integral to the characters in the final game, didn't exist in early development. The picture of Byron with the pompadour is quite cute. And yeah, again, I have to take this time. I'm so sorry if I missed something. Again, I, I encourage you guys to pause. and um, I always make sure some te texts have a few, at least a few frames for you to pause on. Adoba Villagers, the children of Link's hometown, Adoba Village, in the middle of the mischief-loving Joe, to the left is little sister Rai. The boy on the right was cut and never used in the game. But he reminds me from the, the kid from, Hy from Majora's Mask. Citizens of Hyrule and Hyrule Castle Town. And there's me showing you. Whittleton Villagers, uh, Papuchia Villagers. Oh, and I love the different uh, people, you know, the Goron tribe, the Bunny Bunnyo and Ferris. I love that. I really do. It's cool stuff. Monsters. And I highly recommend you watch this in full screen to read it as much as you can. Phi Tops. Because of the work that goes into defeating the boss involves slashing it with the stylus, the weak points were designed to be clearly visible. <sighs> Phantoms. Yep. And here's a bunch more baddies. More baddies. Not much. I don't even think I. I remember in the initial recording too. I don't even remember what I said here either, because I didn't have much to say. You know, it's just showing pictures. You know, beautiful pictures at that. But again, like, I, in case you miss anything, I do also have to say in the first place. I recommend every buy this book. Trains, the spirit train which ferries Link and his friends across the land. The design of the train is modified highly in crest. The triangle is upside down because it is not associated with the story of the Triforce, which I do really enjoy about this timeline, which I would like to see it advance further because um, I think it's really cool, that idea of uh, Hyrule's gone now and trying to set, set, set a new land. You know, I think that's awesome, especially since considering the other timelines where Hyrule is always on the brink of destruction, you know. Good stuff. And here's some real creative ones. Here's the desert train. And now we're getting to boats. Uh, these sketches depict a variety of vehicles, not all of them trains. The ideas created around them, the, uh, the time period, are precursors of the time shifting shift in Skyward Sword. So, yeah. You know, it's always cool to see those little things, you know, where they would bring things over, inspirations, you know. Design sketches depicting various rail cars, including the uh, uh, included are cars never appeared in the game, including an imitation of an airplane and tingle, etc. To the right, design sketches for spirit flute. Below, the concept art for various items, including uh, illustrations of Link using them. So yeah, it's really enjoyable stuff. Uh, I always like looking into the uh, how designers think. Crests. Uh, above the symbol of the Tower of Spirits and those of the temples found across the land. So the right concept art depicting uh, crest hand banners of the, uh, Hyrule's royal family, as well as a shield carried by the phantoms. It's great. Concept art. A world map. A world map drawn in early development. The designers consulted the world map throughout the game's development, ensuring that no matter where the train went, the players would be able to see the Tower of Spirits located at the heart of the realm. So yeah, to take a look, little look into the world, you know. Tower of Spirits. The Tower of Spirits is a very important place in the story, and Link visits it many times during his adventure. Perhaps the fact that it's such a large number of design sketches were under consideration is a reflection of its importance. And there it is, yeah. yeah. I, it's like, I, I'm sorry, I do wish I had more to say here, but um, I, I, I still have to get this... Uh, it's the same thing with the Oracle series. I have not gotten to ages yet because I want to get see seasons done first. A number of design sketches depict grass, wheels, and interaction of track. Included images. No. And now we're in the. Uh, we're, that's the long stretch. We're now going to look at changes in the character design. Um, the timeline. Uh, the way they uh, put the jumbled up the pictures together is a little weird. But with each incarnation of the series, the appearance of the characters have evolved. Here's a look at the changes in order which they appeared. 86, The Legend of Zelda. The original Zelda establishes Link now familiar style. A sword, a shield, and a green garb. 87, The Adventure of Link. In The Adventure of Link, our hero is now 16 years old. As a result, he appears more mature than in his first title. 91, A Link to the Past. A Triforce and a bird appear on Link's shield for the first time. The design of the shield was carried over to other games in the series, though it underwent many variations. Okay, 993, Link's Awakening. 98, Ocarina of Time. 
Two generations of Link appear in this time-traveling adventure. The appearance had influence on protagonist design in later games of the series. 2000, Majora's Mask, if I can get to it. Though the Link from Majora's Mask is the same as the Link from Ocarina of Time, he looks a bit more adventurous. Perhaps he has matured following his battle against Ganondorf. Okay, 2009, Spirit Tracks, 11, Skyward Sword, 07, uh, Hourglass, uh, 06, Twilight Princess. The first appearance of Adult Link since 98's Ocarina of Time. For the first time in the history of the series, Link is right-handed, though only in the Wii version. Because you righties gotta take me, us lefties down. 2004, Minish Cat. 2001, Oracle Series. 2003, Link to the Past and Four Swords. The debut of multicolored Links to align with the game's multiplayer capabilities. The four Links appear once again in Skyward Sword Adventures, the game's sequel. I wonder if that was the same year. 2001, the Oracle Series also missed. Yeah, the... the 2002, The Wind Waker, the debut of Cat Eye Link, though we will call him Toon Link because of Smash Brothers. His design has since been adopted by the portable entries of the series. Okay, now we're going to Zelda. 86, Legend of Zelda, the, an illustration of Princess Zelda. Her outfit is very simple compared to the Princess Zeldas from A Link to the Past onward. Her hair color is, in this game is red, rather than the gold fans are familiar with. 91, A Link to the Past. The first Princess Zelda to have golden hair. Her design determined the look of the Princess Zeldas that followed. Okay, there we go. I'll show it. 98, Ocarina of Time. With, uh, as with Link, two generations of Zelda appear in this game. It also marks introduction of her alter ego, Sheik. Sorry. 2001, Oracle Series. This incarnation of Princess Zelda has more exaggerated proportions, making her appear cutesy. The design of her outfit emulates adult Zeldas from Ocarina of Time. 2002, The Wind Waker, the debut of Tetra the Pirate. She doesn't appear in her familiar princess form until the final portion of the game. 2009, Spirit Tracks. Um, because she is intended to be a descendant of Tetra, her look is, her look is similar to of Tetra's appearance as a princess in The Wind Waker. On the left, she is nothing more than a spirit after losing possession of her body. There's 2011, Skyward Sword, we know about that. Uh, 2006, Twilight Princess. This incarnation of Princess Zelda is the most mature of any Zelda series in the series so far. She takes on a frightening form when she is possessed by Ganondorf in the final uh, portion of the battle. Yeah. 2007, Phantom Hourglass. Uh, 2003, A Link to the Past and Four Swords. Princess Zelda, as she appears in Four Swords, a large red, the large ribbon adorning her head is one of her tall marks. And 2004, the Minish Cap. Ganon, 1998, uh, and. Also Gandorf, uh, but the first appearance of Ganon's previous incarnation, Ganondorf. His design as a ha red-haired demonic thief was carried over to later entries, later titles in the series. 2001 Oracle Series. The design brings to mind Ganon as he appears in the first Zelda game. Perhaps the trident he carries is the same one that he possesses in A Link to the Past. Food for thought. 2002, The Wind Waker, my favorite Ganondorf. Though this is, is the same incarnation of Ganondorf that appeared in Ocarina of Time, his appearance is quite different. He now has the air of a monarch. Okay, 2006, Twilight Princess. The design hammers out the image of a warrior clad in armor. His appearance following his transformation is even more beast-like. And here's the game catalog. The Legend of Zelda series has spawned numerous sequels and spin-offs. Here you'll find a collection of all the titles that has been released to date. Let's take a look at how far the series has come. I'm not going to read them individually. This is the time I, I, I urge you guys to take to maybe pause it if you really want to read it. But, you know, if you just want to skim through it and see the the box cover art they kept from different regions, you know, that's always fun too. Um, but yeah, this ends this ends it up to the uh, letter, which I'll be reading soon. I uh, just want to take this time that to say that I really liked doing this read-through. I think it's good to have that initial just me reading period. You know, it, it's just a help for, uh, that's why I, I wanted the first, this to be the first read through in the playlist. I, I, I think it'll help a lot in uh, the next two where I analyze it. And I do encourage you guys to, ch to check that out too. I, I really enjoy doing this series. Uh, I will not be reading this book anymore. If other books come like this, uh, I would love if they made a real life Picklepedia from Pikmin. That'd be really cool. Uh, the problem is, I don't know what it'd be like if I had to, uh, if there's no digital version, you know, this digital version made it a lot of really nice to do this series with because uh, I originally, and I don't mind just me in front of a camera, but you know, in the end of the day, I thought, I don't know, but yeah, it's been a really cool series. Um, I really hope uh, you guys enjoyed this too. 
I'm sorry I've been uploading so much of these for the people watching in this, this in the present. Um, but, uh, you know, I just want to get it done before the summer. That way I can focus on uh, whatever I need to focus on, you know. But, yeah, you know. I'm getting to the end here so I can read the final uh, farewell letter in the book and we will be done. Just let that scroll a little bit. Still not done with editing, and now because of this, I have to cut short and leave. So it's been a while since I, uh, I'm actually re uh, returning back from a couple hours. I had to go to class, but I'm back. Um, and yeah, uh, I probably didn't finish a thought before there, and you're like, why don't you just listen to the last few seconds? Well, because I'm not that professional. Despite what some things might say. Okay, here's the final thing um, that I accidentally skipped over because I forgot about it. Um, yes, wrapping things up. I.J. Awanuma, director and producer at Nintendo Corporation and series producer of The Legend of Zelda series. This year we've been able to welcome the 25th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda, and it's all thanks to you. We've launched a number of campaigns to show our appreciation for the fan for the support the series has received, including holding a symphony orchestra concert in three major cities around the world and distributing four sword anniversary editions for free via DSiWare. After all this, I find myself wondering whether there wasn't anything left over that we would be able to complete into a book. That's how The Legend of Zelda Hyrule Storia came to be. The book is divided into four sections. The first section, The Legend Begins, tells the story of Skyward Sword, the latest entry in the series. The second, The History of Hyrule, is organized chronologically according to the eras of the Zelda series. The third is known as Creative Footprints, where we introduce artwork from gamers, including rough sketches from the games from pre past releases. Finally, the fourth section features a special co uh, comic from Kampa Queen Akira Hemekawa. Creative Footprints contains a large amount of material that has never before left the halls of Nintendo. In order for, to help us compile this section, staff members were kind enough to go hunting and through stacks of ancient documents and, and experience akin to losing themselves in the depths of a dungeon. The history of Hyrule allows players to determine where each Zelda game is something or other of the series. Darn it. One thing to bear in mind, however, is that the question the developers of the Legend of Zelda series asked themselves before starting on a game was, what kind of gameplay should we focus on, rather than what kind of story should we write? For example, the theme of Ocarina of Time, the first Zelda game I was involved with, was what kind of responsive gameplay will we be able to create in a 3D environment? The theme of Fan Hourglass, which I helped for the Nintendo DS, was how can we make the game comfortable to use to control using the stylus? Lastly, the theme of Skyward Sword, the latest entry series, how can we use the Wii Mode Plus to allow players to freely manipulate the world? Because the games were developed in such a manner, it could be said that Zelda's storylines were afterthoughts. And here's the IJ Ironuma's Hyrule history you can pause and check out. I only go through that briefly. And as a result, I feel even the story of The Legend of Zelda Begins in Skyward Sword was something that simply came about by chance. Flipping through the pages of the history of Hyrule, you may even notice a few inconsistencies. However, people such as the Mogma tribe and items such as the Beetle that appear in Skyward Sword may show up again in other eras. Thus, it is my hope that the fans will be broad-minded enough to take into consideration that this is simply how Zelda is made. I may be exaggerating a little, but I feel like developing a large-scale video game like The Legend of Zelda is similar to setting out on a voyage across the ocean in a distant past. I've said that each installment in the series has a theme. For me, that involves coming up with a system that I've not yet had the opportunity to explore. And it's similar to seeking a new continent that no one on Earth has visited before. We set out from the harbor without even a, without a single sea chart. We, still, we start out not knowing what direction we're headed in, and the, the small crew argues back and forth about where to go and what to do. Sometimes we find ourselves adrift. Other times we're buffeted by storms and end up becoming shipwrecked. Still others, we cry that we've discovered new land. But when we make for sure, we end up at a loss when we find that it is nothing but a tiny, barren island. However, we, may, we never remain in the same place for long. And as we keep moving forward, we eventually catch sight of the new continent we've been seeking just beyond the horizon. The crew gets bigger, and we all band together to make a push for their new world. It's a lot of fun, enough to make me completely forget about the times that I felt abandoning ship 
and storms crash down on us. If we can manage to make it safely to the opposite shore, then I know fans around the world will enjoy... Give me a sec. What we have achieved. The greatest gratification of making Zelda. With the completion of Skyward Sword in time for Zelda's 25th anniversary, our long voyage is only just now complete. We've started, we're have started. we starting to hear feedback from people all over the world, and we've been kind enough... Who have been kind enough to play our... Give me a sec. Get past me a sec. It's games, by the way. Spoiler alert. That's the next word in the sentence. There we go. The f this feedback includes both praise and criticism. However, the voices of the fans provide us with energy for our next voyage. To be honest with you, the new voyage has already begun. I extend my sincere gratitude and appreciation for your continued support of The Legend of Zelda. Never stop playing Zelda. IJ... IJ... Uh, I always screw that up. Ayanuma. So, yeah. That's it. That's all she wrote. And, uh... Here's a little... This is me flipping through. You know, give you a little test. I just wanted to get to the back page, right? I want to get a back cover. There we go. Doesn't that look great? So, yeah. I think now I'm going to take the time to explain how this series will work in the future. I will not be reading this book anymore. Um, this is the last reading. Uh, I did three readings. First time was my first impressions and, and comments. The second time was a more thorough analysis with, uh, with my commentary, and this time my uh, only concern was make sure everything was read straight through. And yeah, I throw in a tidbit here and there, but I, I think I did a good job primarily just creating a read through of the book and creative footprints. I'm sorry, but I had to say something if, if that makes me look like a hypocrite. But at the end of the day, um, I think this read through went well. Uh, I'm looking forward to future endeavors with this series. What I'm going to do is, from now on, when a game in the Zelda franchise gets confirmed in a spot in the timeline, I will talk about it. I will uh, do my best. I, similar to what I did with uh, with uh, Link Between Worlds, uh, primar primarily more in the second read-through, where I talked about the story, I talked about its importance to the timeline, uh, and like what it does for the timeline, uh, and stuff like that. So. The first time you'll see this updated, it will be about Zelda U. And, uh, I mean, the next time you see this updated. Um, this book... Uh, you know, again, with the second volume if uh, that I'd like, if they ever do do that, I think it'd be really cool, but uh, they're probably gonna wait for like, a lot of games to come out before they spend the money on that, but... I'm just gonna assume it's not gonna happen, just so I... just to update this. These, those, these new updates about the individual games will be at the end of the playlist, not at the beginning, like this series is. This series is only in the beginning because it's a straight read through, and I thought it'd be nice to have that option, you know, so you can make your own thoughts, you know. The ultimate conversation is one of the ultimate things I want in this channel, you know. I give my thoughts and I hear from you guys in the comments. It's something I really enjoy. It's something I'm very much enjoying in Xenoblade. Of course, uh, you know. That's all I have to say. Um, this has been a great, re uh, it's been a great run, great three years with this series, um, and it's and only reading this book primarily is the end of it. So thank you all so much for watching. I've been Billy, your video game analyzer. Have a good day, good night, whenever you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next project.